Let's mm. see. iPad is connecting to audio. <laughs> Hi, iPad. <laughs> not there yet. <laughs> Hi, I. You said Burkhead perfectly. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, now we have the iPad there. Hi, iPad. Welcome to this. Talk. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Hello. If you want to rename them, you're free. If not, oh, if you yes. want to stay anonymous, it's fine too. It's totally up to you. Yeah. Yes. Where, well, where is I'm iPad not... from, though? It would be I'm nice from, to know. I'm from Edmonton, Alberta. Oh, welcome. Welcome. Wonderful. Now, so where, where, where are you all from? I'm Christina, by the way. So. Hi, Christina. Hi, Christina. Hello. Well, well, we're in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Oh, nice. wow. Be I've always wanted to go there. Well, you should come. It's a beautiful place, actually. Well, I, I, I think if we ever end the pandemic, I oh, will yeah. come. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> well, well, Stella, nice to see you, too. Oh, there's nice Michelle. Night. Hello, Michelle from Santa Cruz. No, oh, there great. is Stella in the middle. Can you see Stella, Maxine? Maxine is not seeing well, so I'm helping yeah. her out with... I'm, the, uh, I'm from Halifax. India. You are from Halifax, Las yes. Vegas. Really? Oh and my I am God! From Halifax, Nova Scotia, That's Canada. Yeah. What, what took you to Santa Cruz? If you don't no, mind me, I ask. Well, you live in Santa Cruz now? Maxine, Maxine, Stella is not on. Stella is on. She's from Halifax. Oh, sorry. Michelle is from Santa Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm oh trying to keep Lord. it together, but the bigger we get, we have 36 <laughs> people registered besides us. Yeah. But most of the time they are not coming, which is fine when they get the replay, but they won't have the fun right then and there. That's true. Yeah, I hope all of you have a piece of paper and a pencil pen or something. I have on here and I have a pencil, pen. And pencil, pen, pen, crayon, it doesn't matter. Anything that'll make a mark, eh? I have a pencil too, and I always quote my husband when I see that pen because he said, we all make mistakes. That's why the pencil has an eraser. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's here? And Joanne? Joanne? Maxine? Joanne yes. is on the way. Joanne? Yeah. Okay. we will be in in a moment. Lovely. Wonderful. That is a lot of fun. There. There she is. <laughs> okay, it's Joanne and Michelle. Another Michelle. Isn't that awesome? Hi, Joanne is connecting to audio. And Michelle is connecting to audio. Okay. Joanne is not in audio. Yeah, back. So there's one room. Okay. For everybody, please. When you're not talking, please mute yourself. If you have too much background noise, I will have to mute, mute each of you, but I prefer not to. But Christine, then, Christine, maybe some people might not know how to mute themselves, because I didn't. You didn't? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. If you don't know, there's a button on the bottom left that looks like a microphone, and it says mute. And when you click on it, oops, there you go. So I'm just so you just so you know, I'm the same Michelle. I'm trying okay. to be on my iPad because then I can actually talk. We'll see if it keeps working or not. But awesome. <laughs> so the, you're the Michelle from Santa Cruz. I am. Awesome. Wonderful. Wow. I love that's that in great. your background. That's a native thing, right? Maxine, you would it know is. more about it. A, a dream catcher. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Super, super. Awesome. Wow. Okay. So how are we doing time-wise, Christine, please? Four minutes. We'll start on okay. time a little okay. bit late, maybe. And we will record this and uh, it will go on YouTube probably. And I just wanted to let you know. And if after we start the recording, I will let you know when I start taping. Uh, when you don't want to be on video, let me know and I'll put it on speaker view. So it's just us, but it's probably the best if you don't want to be on tape to uh, uh, switch off your video, but still be there. And you can always communicate 
oh yeah, Glasgow after the seminar. She gave you a link to see Glasgow in oh, uh, that Lisa in Glasgow. Glasgow. I'll send oh. that to I'll send that to Maxine. From, oh yes, from, please. My grandfather from, from, I, from Scotland. Mm. Awesome, Lisa. Thank you. And Joanne is still connecting to audio. We'll wait okay. until she is there. And uh, I'm happy we have a good class and a good uh, workshop. And it will be a lot of fun. Yeah. And I'm talking too much. And if I do, you let me know. Oh my God, look at that. Christina did a great painting. She's an artist. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. That's it's not mine. Awesome. It's not mine. It's just, I use it to, to draw and paint on. Oh, it's so, lovely though, isn't it? It's yeah. pretty. I, I bought it at like a, a senior's garage sale years ago. Oh. And I mean, it was, no one was buying it and it was brand new. And I just thought, why wouldn't someone want this? Because it's so nice just to look at. And it's nice. Firing a little bit, so. yeah, you, know, you, know, you know why? You know why nobody bought it? Uh-uh. Yes, Sabine. Because it was yours. Exactly. There's there. another lady. Right. Maxine. <laughs> Maxine, there's another lady coming on. Okay. Sabine. Sabine. Ah. And she's connecting to audio. Oh, I, I say yeah. Sabine because that's a German name. I'm originally from Germany. Hi, Sabine. Is it right to say Sabine or is it Sabine? What do you want to be called? Uh, I'm called Savian. Hi, how are you? And I'm Hi, sorry Sabine. I don't have uh, my camera because it doesn't work on Zoom. <laughs> so sorry. No problem. That. No problem at all. There's Danielle coming on. Oh, great. Isn't this nice? Yeah, that's wonderful. And uh, ah. what, what we'll do is when the people come on, I'll just greet them on the chat from now on. And uh, because we'll start in one minute. Mm -hmm. And as I said, who dropped off? I'm not quite sure. It doesn't matter. There will be always people dropping in and out. And it's always exciting to see people. Joanne is still trying to connect to the audio. Let me see if I can message her. Okay, I messaged her to help her okay. get in. All right. And Is that Joanne B? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it is Joanne. So we have six people on so far, which is awesome besides us. Okay. Oh, come on. So we will start the webinar now. Let me just turn my email off so it doesn't give the sound off all the time. Okay. Welcome everyone again. Uh, I'm Dr. Christine Sauer, the host and technical supervisor, producer and everything. Uh, <laughs> and Maxine Silva, welcome. She is a portrait painter and poet and you will hear her amazing story and she will teach you how to be uh, authentic Stella, your husband or Charles or, or some is joining your brother. And uh, she will uh, help you discover your authentic self and that we are all artists, which I didn't know until I did some sculpturing. And it was okay. I'm not perfect, but hey, it was good. That's not what you tell me, Christy. Do I say I'm perfect? <laughs> all the time. You're always telling me you're perfect. Yeah. No, you yeah, don't. Why do you? We are actually having a video <laughs> show, Oma and Nana, where we are always a little bantering and fighting online. It's yeah, we do a lot of videos together. It's fun. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah. welcome again, everybody. Hi, Charles. Good to see, talk to you. I got to have you here, I should say. And uh, for technology, if you, this video uh, is taped, of course, and if you don't want to be on, seen on tape on the video, please 
shut your video off, but you're all beautiful, so it's uh, actually okay. We'll have fun and uh, Maxine will share her story. And if anything is any questions, please let me know. There's on the bottom, there's reaction buttons. And it's always fun if you use them. For example, you can raise your hand. Hey, I want some to say something. Or you can say, that is so funny. I can't stop laughing. Or you can say, oh, that's so sweet. I love it. Or you can say, ah, let's celebrate. Let's party. You can say, oh, I can't believe that. <laughs> or you can say, hey, I love that. Christine, or you can say hi. Maybe, maybe what we should do, if, if people will indulge me, <clears throat> I'd like to know what is your interest in being here? And then perhaps I can satisfy that need a little more greatly. Um, <clears throat> can, can we do that? Would you, those of you who want to, if you would say, why are you here? What is it you would like to, to observe or learn or whatever today? Can we start with uh, maybe Christina? Everyone, or... I, will, I will also type that question in the chat box and everyone that wants to answer it privately can type it in the chat box and I will read that. That's my task as a tech host. <laughs> yes. Did you want me to say why I came to the class? Yes, Christina. Oh, because I, I really, I, I through this, through my journey in life these last few years, art has always been a big solace for me. And I've been really drawn to drawing portraits in the last little while or learning. I'm just a self-taught artist, but I'm always learning and uh, very much into intuitive art. I practice a lot of meditation. I, I felt that this class had a potential to, to fill in, you know, fill that, uh, you know, just what I want to learn. So yeah, that's why I'm here. I, I'm not having my walk today, so so that I could be for this class. So there wow. you go. <laughs> Wonderful. And, and Michelle Goldstein, may I call on you if you want to share a little? Yes, absolutely. Um, so I'm open to learning anything that I can get. Um, and I'm specifically thought I might get some uh, something that would help me figure out my style, you know, because are you a Picasso or a Van Gogh makes me think about, so what is your style? What do you gravitate towards? And I don't really know that. So I see. I see. Okay. And Stella. Are Martin? you there? Okay. Hello? Yes. I just yeah. unmuted myself. Okay. <laughs> I think during COVID, I uh, tried with the help of my husband, who was very supportive getting my uh, art supplies. Uh, when I did try uh, a less, and now I should say, like almost like a session that was online uh, mm -hmm. through Museum of Modern Art, they, they were helping and I, tried and I know my style is more Van Gogh than Picasso <laughs> and uh, this came into my email and uh, through Eventbrite I was interested uh, just to continue the journey I like painting I do uh, a lot of uh, I wouldn't say abstract but I like uh, painting with uh, acrylics and uh, I love scenery, especially uh, water themes. And I did like Van Gogh's. Uh, it just gives you some of that free flow and uh, mm -hmm. uh, something to visualize and what you are thinking and feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maxine, Wonderful. Maxine, I need to just interrupt you to welcome Marichka. Hi, is it co pro correctly pronounced? Marichka? 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 Marichka, hi. Marichka, yeah. hi Marichka. Welcome. This is not accessible by, from iPad from the Eventbrite app, so I need a passcode so I can watch because otherwise I'm standing at my desk, which is not going to help. Okay, I uh, can give you the passcode. Thank you, and then I'll just rejoin, so thank you for that. No problem. Sorry to hold things up. I'm, I'm the tech host here. Okay. So I didn't know it, that it wasn't interesting. 
And so Charles is going to say something, is he? That, that's funny because I was able to get on with my iPad. Yeah. Uh, it's well, it's been a consistent problem with event break for me, so thank you. Uh, bummer. Uh, Maxine, we have uh, three messages in the. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. In the box, uh, we said, uh, uh, "I struggled with portraits, but done a few like Elvis, Julian Assange, and retro style." And Sabine said, I started painting three years ago. I think I'm good at coloring, but not drawing. So I would love to learn those things that would help. Okay. Awesome. And who was that, please? I don't know if she wants to tell us. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I thought I thought she identified herself. No issue. Well, no I don't know who it is in yeah. the chat, but uh, I said I would. Sabine. It's Sabine. Sabine? She's okay. Sabine. Sabine, yes, yes. Sabine, she's okay. Yeah, I was saying actually, I, I love coloring. Um, and I've been uh, coloring since uh, three years now, maybe a little bit more, but I'm really not good at, at drawing, at preparing the bases before starting the colors. So this is why I thought, and especially at portraits, so really, I'm, I'm really bad at that. So that's why I would love to learn something new here. <sighs> I'm I'm laughing only because when I share my story, then you'll understand. I'll okay. tell it just one time to everybody. But thank you for sharing that. Um, is anybody else would like to to say why it is that they're here or what they're interested in portraiture? No? Well, I'm curious because they're very different styles, and so I'm intrigued as to the personality <laughs> elements that that suggests when you prefer or lean toward one or the other. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna pop okay. off. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna stop and rejoin you all, but uh, see you shortly. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful, thanks. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Or, or... No? Any other messages, Christine, at the moment? Uh, no, so far it's good, but I just wanna say something. If you want to get the most out of Maxine and you see everybody on and you don't want that, there's a little button on the top right, it says view. And you can switch between speaker view and you still see the others as uh, little uh, thumbnails or gallery view. And in the gallery view, you also can uh, uh, put your mouse on the videos and switch the videos around the, the thumbnails. So you have them, the, the, the videos where you want them. It's kind of cool. There's Maritzka back, Maritzka back. So make the screen so that you can really see what Maxine is saying because she's great. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I've got to live up to that now. Yes. All right. Work on oh, are we ready? Yes. Okay. And anybody that does not, Aruna, did you want to say something? Go ahead. Oh no, <laughs> not really. But uh, I'm I'm a, a very, I'm a novice, complete. Awesome. Um, I I just used to draw when I was quite young, and I used to enjoy it. Um, I can't paint very well, but I like to draw. You're not a That's novice. <laughs> That's the important thing, that you have a feeling towards it. Yeah. So, all right. So thank you all for being so patient with the initial introductions and the little technical things here and there, whatever, right? I'm Maxine Silva. I was born Maxine Alexander Bernadette Murphy, became Maxine Alexander Bernadette Veronica Murphy, Maxine Alexander Bernadette Veronica Murphy Tehran. Maxine Alexander Bernadette Murphy Turon Silva, and I'm Maxine Silva today. My mother liked to use a lot of names. <laughs> My brothers and I both have a long list of names when we were born. Anyway, married twice, uh, divorced once, um, widowed the second husband. And the reason I tell you that is because everybody has a journey and uh, um, it's all of the experiences that we have in life that lead us to whatever it is we are ultimately going to do with our lives. I was always interested in art and drawing and sketching and whatever when I was a little girl. And I never ever thought I was good at it, ever. And quite frankly, nobody ever told me I was. Um, you know, I never ever got like, oh, that's really good. Um, like, uh, 
uh, and so I, I I always felt insecure. So anyway, I I as I say, I've been married twice. Um, I I was born in the UK. I grew up in Nova Scotia, predominantly Halifax, but throughout the province. And then I moved to uh, New Jersey in 1970 when my first husband was from New Jersey. And um, uh, then I had four children. My first daughter died at the age of three from a liver, di liver disease. I got involved in nonprofit work because I was bound and determined to save my daughter. Unfortunately, I couldn't. And it was an era of transplantation, liver transplantation. That's what she had is a liver disease. So then um, it took a toll on my marriage, quite frankly. And my husband and I separated after 16 years. I'd met my second husband to be, and uh, he swept me off my feet. He was from uh, Montevideo, Uruguay in South America. And I thought it was the love of my life and whatever. He was an alcoholic, I didn't realize it. And later on, um, he beat me and there were all kinds of difficulties uh, with my children who had been born from my, my first husband and they hated my second husband. So uh, ultimately, um, the whole story goes is that my children went to live with their father be because their father was involving himself in my life and causing a lot of grief. It was very bad, and I won't go into all of that now, but I tell you that because I have a story, like all of you I know have a story. So in 2008, I was living in New Jersey. I decided to move back to uh, Nova Scotia. And when I came back, I thought, oh my God, either I've changed or the place has changed. I felt like a fish out of water. So I went to a tarot card reader here in, in, in Halifax and he looked at my cards and he said, uh, you got to get out of Dodge. <laughs> you need to be in a place uh, around people of like mind. And I said, well, I have a friend who goes to Bali, Indonesia every year and he rents out his place for six months or so. And, and then he goes and he said, you could do that. I said, yeah, I could do that. So I left his place and I'm walking along the street in Halifax. It's about supper time. And I stop into this little restaurant. I order a glass of wine and a lovely meal. And I toast myself. I'm going to Bali. I went home. I got on my computer. And my professional background is in nonprofit development. I looked for an organization in Bali that I could connect with. And um, two came up and I, I, I didn't care if I was working with them or volunteering or whatever. By then I was in my 60s. So I was on social security from the US. So I had a little income, so I didn't have to worry about finding a job necessarily. Uh, so the one lady wrote back to me was from California. And she said, this is in uh, uh, July of 2009. She said, in December, we're having a big international meeting and you're welcome to come. So what did I do? I sublet the place I was living in. I sold all of my stuff. I then made my reservations to fly to Bali. And in September of 2009, I was there. And you know what? Sometimes things happen in your life where you just go for the gusto. And I did. Everybody thought I was crazy, out of my mind completely. What are you doing? And um, so I was living there for about three years. And while I was living in Bali, I visited India a few times. And always there was this thing inside me calling me, like, like on a spiritual quest. I couldn't quite identify it, but I was just going with the flow. Now, I am a very sociable person, but during that period of time in Bali, I became really reclusive. I stayed in a lot. But during that time, a friend of mine who was a very good artist came to me and said, would you like to go to an art class uh, just down the road? And I said, no. And she said, come on. 
you come with me, whatever. And I said, no. Do you know why I said no? Not that I didn't want to, I wanted to, but I thought I would be totally mortified to show myself up in front of all these accomplished artists. But she kept insisting and insisting, and I said, all right, I'll go. So I went to the art class, and the teacher was this old Japanese man named Mori. He died a few years ago now, but anyway, Mori. And he said to me, what would you like to paint? And I said, I don't know. I came because of my friend. He gave me a folder with a whole bunch of, of uh, pictures inside of people and animals and landscapes and flowers and whatever. And he said, you choose what you want to paint. So I'm leafing through and I see this old lady. I said, I want to paint her. He said, okay. He gave me the canvas and uh, he said, pick your colors. So I went and I picked my colors. And the class was from nine to one. And at the end of that class, I had painted that old lady and I was in shock. People were coming and saying to me, oh, how long have you been painting? Here she is. I said, this is my very first painting. I have never done this in my life. So I, I was as shocked as they were. So as I was working on this old lady, I felt this, this love towards her. There was, I, I don't know, she looked so lonely, so afraid. So my teacher came over and he put his hands on my painting. Now, he did an eye. I did an eye. I don't know if you know which eye was mine. Maybe you can, that was my eye. And then he did that eye. And I was like embarrassed. I didn't want to say, don't touch my painting because I, I was totally intimidated. But when I looked at it afterwards, I felt really badly because this is not totally my painting. It is, but it isn't that I didn't do that eye. I didn't like that eye, but I left it. And so out of that, I realized, yes, I'd always been interested in art and whatever, but every single one of us, every sentient being which we are has the ability to create something, but not from the outside. You take that eye away that, that, that my teacher did, and that's my interpretation of that old lady. So the feelings from within me went right into that canvas. So uh, I, I, was, I was just totally blown away by that because, uh, I, I, as I say, I was in shock. So I went to a class every Saturday for a few weeks. Every time I went and sat in front of a canvas, now I always did it with a photo, by the way, and I still do that, I use a photo today. Every time I would sit in front of that canvas, I would feel trepidation and fear, I can't do this. And it didn't always happen in four hours, but over maybe one or two sessions, that image would come forth. And each time I go, oh, geez, can I do it again? Can I do it again? I didn't know. I have had no formal training as an artist, none. And while I was traveling in Bali and India, I met a number of people who were self-taught also. And then I realized, you see, technique is important, but without the feeling, without your essence coming onto that canvas, or that piece of paper, or whatever you're using, it's not real, in my humble opinion. I had a conversation yesterday with my brother, and he's a wonderful musician. And I told him, I feel, you know, everybody has this innate ability to create something beautiful, especially in art. And he said, well, I think I would disagree with that. You know, you need the technique and all of that stuff. And I said, everybody to their own opinion. I know through my experience what that means to me. So then what happened was I decided I was going to move to India. Again, there was this pull. I'd met some people there. I had a place to live. So I flew to India. I was living in a hotel 
that the manager became a good friend of mine. And Gandhi is the, uh, the epitome of, uh, of devotion to Indian people, to most Indian people anyway. So the owner of this hotel said to me, why don't you paint Gandhi? And I said, oh, no way, are you kidding me? If I mess up, that's no stranger. People will realize it was my feeble attempt at Gandhi, right? So he, I had a, a, an easel set up in my, my hotel room and I'd be painting or whatever and he'd come in and he'd say, oh, you know what? I don't think his eyebrows are quite that dark and did that and he'd tell me little things. And you know what? Gandhi's face came right off that canvas. Scared the, the Jesus out of me because I didn't know I could do it. Then I had to paint the glasses and everything. So it was like, oh, I did this from, from a photo. Now, I don't think Gandhi was really smiling in this, but when I showed this to people in India uh, over a period of time, they said they'd never seen a picture of Gandhi smiling. So it's very interesting. <laughs> Again, it's my interpretation of what I see that I go within myself. I don't, I don't know how this happens, but I know without speaking to any one of you about this, you have this in you too. We all have that innate ability to create something, but we get scared. We block ourselves off. I can't do this. I'm not good enough. I'll show myself up. I did all of those things. Even up to this day, I'm yeah, I started when I was 66, I'm 75 today. So I started nine years ago to paint portraits. I found out after I had chosen a portrait to paint and after I continued to do them, portraits are the most difficult uh, of all um, uh, subjects to paint. And especially old people because of all the lines and all that. And I started off with an old lady, right? I call her Loveless. I would never get rid of her till the day I die because she's uh, uh, pivotal to me in, in my journey. So anyway, uh, there was Gandhi, and did him, and then I continued to paint while I was in India. And uh, there was an art gallery nearby and I had a small exhibition of my work. And I, believe me, it was like I was walking in a dream in a way. And so, uh, coming to, out for a new artist, nobody wants to, to know a new artist. I mean, they want somebody with a name and all of that. So I, I had worked in the office of Henry Kissinger in New York for some time as a, um, uh, an executive gatekeeper type thing, right? And so my friend wrote to the newspapers and said, she worked in the office of Henry Kissinger, former Secretary of State of the US, the media came out <laughs> and they wanted to know what was he like to work with. They didn't care about my art necessarily, but they wanted a story about that. And I just said, well, Mr. Kissinger was always nice to me. And so, you know, whatever. I didn't say anything other than that. So um, then what happened was I, I moved, I was living in Bangalore, India. I moved up north to New Delhi and um, I had this beautiful terrace with all these tropical plants and trees and everything that I would sit out uh, and, and during the day. And one day I was sitting on my terrace and uh, at that time, I think it was 2016, there was a lot of horrible things happening in the world as there often are even today. And I felt really sad and the tear came down my face. And um, I saw an image in my head of a female figure embracing the world holding the world like this. So I had a paper and pen and I quickly sketched it. I can't find that sketch. I don't know where it is because I wanted to show you. But anyway, I'd sketched it and then I wrote Danielle. That was the name of my daughter who died when she was three. And then I wrote Ama. And Ama in Hindi means mother. So I wasn't sure what the messages were that I was getting, whether it was my, my uh, daughter Danielle or whether it was um, uh, another female figure. I didn't know. That's Danielle there. I'm pregnant with my second daughter. There. She was, this was a, a, a few months before she died, actually. She was just going to be three. So anyway, 
after having this image of this female figure holding the world, comforting it, I went inside and I went on Facebook and a friend of mine, Sanj, in, in uh, Bangalore, in India, had posted a picture. And this is what it was. And I got chills in my body because it was almost like what I had sketched. That's like, oh my God. So I told her about it and she said, you know, this, this happens and people get the, the vibrations and whatever, you're picking up all kinds of stuff. So then I decided, all right, obviously it's a message. I have to paint it. And so I started out with the, with the rough sketch at the top left-hand corner there, right? You think you're holding the world. Now, I have had no professional training. I told you, right? So, and then the one I started to draw, it's the world. I started to draw the world. But then that dot in the, in the middle started to become an eyeball. It just spontaneously in my head, yeah, it's an eyeball. And then I started to color in. And then in the last one, the, the, the turbulent waters at the, on the bottom. And um, the Danielle, I'm, I'm sure it was my daughter, Danielle, <laughs> her third eye is on the world. And she's sending out love to the world. Those dots that go around are like, the, you know, when you take a picture and you have your, what do you call those again? The orbs, orbs are all around her. And so it's, this is another painting I will never get rid of because it has such meaning to me. And um, so, uh, I, yeah, that's, that's Danielle. So then I was um, going through all of this process and I thought to myself, hmm, you know, why am I here? What am I doing? And all of that sort of thing. So I started to have these long, longing feelings to go back to Canada, to, to Halifax. I couldn't explain it exactly. But during the, the time that I was in India, I started to write poetry spontaneously too. Started to come to me. Started to come to me. And I started to write it all. And um, I wrote a poem just before I came back here. And I just, if you will indulge me, I'll just read it quickly. And it's called The Seagull's Cry. As the sun comes o'er the night's dark veil, I hear your mournful cry. You cruise the sky in circular sail. The hours pass quickly by. I smell the sea through the ship's fog horn. The harbor comes alive. A new day dawns and I must rise. Life's not to just survive. I watch you swoop and deftly dive in rhythm with your mate. Each day is planned, more goals arrive. A sea life is your fate. I wish I too could spread my wings and free myself from shore to once again be one with you and hear the ocean's roar. I left you once to seek my soul in Asia's sunny clime, pursuing dreams on green atolls, my life I thought was mine. In retrospect, I do now know our lives are borrowed time, our charge to live in peace, although we tend to cross the line. Thinking we've another chance whene'er we make mistakes, alas, we foolish beings dance and on thin ice we place our skates. Fly high, my friend, your time is short. Go ere that you must go, for you will find another port. The sea can show you so. And when I, when I wrote that, I, I, I knew that I had to go home. So when I came home, if you can put that on, Christine, I painted this. And it's sort of, you know, it's representative of me, I'm not that skinny, I wish. <laughs> but looking out to sea and longing, you know, what is it longing for? Longing to go home, longing for love. Uh, it, it's a combination, but, but going home is going towards love. I, I, I am very spiritual and I believe, I don't believe in a particular religion, a religion or, or Godhead or whatever, but in that we're all connected. This is 
the universe, we're all made up of atoms that vibrate. And this is how we get our messages. If, and only if we pay attention and take them uh, as they're coming, because, you know, we dismiss so many of those gut feelings, those impressions, those vibrations that we get. And when we do that, we only delay the inevitable, because ultimately I believe that all of us will come to that point where we can accept this and we will find our nirvana or whatever it is, you know. But just quickly, I want to tell you something. When I was in India, I was working with some three and four year old kids. And little children are amazing because they haven't had anything knocked out of them as we have as adults. They're just truly creative and they say whatever is on their mind. So that particular day, they were learning about ants. Ant has three part body parts and you know, and, and where they live and in the, in, 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 the, in the dirt and all of that stuff. So my charge was to work with the children after they had their lesson to do a drawing. So I said to the kids, okay, so now you've learned about the ant. Why don't you draw the ant and the ant's life and all the things that you've learned? So as I was going around <laughs> and looking at these drawings and the colorings that there were, these kids had houses and gardens and all, all for the ant, right? And all of these things are very, very sophisticated for three and four year old kids. So this one little boy who had drawn something off in the, to the side of the house. I said, what's that? And he looked at me like totally incredulously and said, that's the ant's horse. Like, you know, <laughs> every ant has a horse. And I, I didn't want to laugh because I, I would have made him feel badly. But that was his perception of the ant. Nobody told him an ant doesn't have a horse. In his mind and his heart, that ant had a horse. And the, the ants had houses and all kinds of stuff, right? So I, this might seem a little long-winded to you the, to tell you this, but I fully believe, and it's been my experience, that everybody has the capability to express themselves creatively. And it doesn't matter if some people say, yeah, you're good, you're not, do this, that. Don't let anybody touch your work. And don't let anybody negatively criticize your work because this came from you. This came from your true essence of who you are. Now, does practice improve things? You betcha. So um, this is something I'm working on right now. I don't know if you can see it from here, can you? Yeah, you can see it. Can you see it? Uh -huh. um, North American Indians are, are something that I'm really interested in too. I just wanted to show you this and in a moment, uh, I'll show you my latest portrait. But so I go with whatever it is that makes me feel I should try this. And again, still I have those same trepidations. I do, I guess it's like in, in me too. Um, uh, and my family has not complimented me on my work at all. And I, I, uh, I felt badly, you know, initially, but then I thought it doesn't matter. It's my test. It's my test. And I've written a book called The Siren Sings. And it's uh, uh, some of my poetry and paintings. And um, this is another portrait that I did while I was in Bali. It was a friend of mine. And he's an Indian man, but he had come to Bali as a photographer and he's wearing um, uh, a Balinese dress there, the headgear and, and, and all, which is very similar to Indian because 90% of the, of the island is Indian. And, um, uh, this was another one that I did in Bali also. It's an, uh, a Chinese couple. And again, all of these have come from pictures and they're my interpretation of pictures. But the love that this couple, this old couple have for each other is, a, is like palpable, you know? So I, I did want to share this before we got into the nitty gritty. I, I think that people 
like I say, need to express themselves in their own way. There are some technical things that we can all learn, mind you, and I'll show you one thing in a moment. But um, just try it is all I can say. And why portraits for me? I don't know. It was, you know, why did I choose the most difficult thing to be creative with? I don't know. But I just know that's what I feel like inside. And so that's it. <laughs> so now, Christine, we are going to do uh, the beginnings of a portrait. And paint. Yes, so if everybody has some paper and pencil or pen or crayon or anything to mark with. Now, here's the thing, and this proves my point. Christine's gonna start drawing an oval on with a digitized one. And she's gonna do her very best, but it's nothing like what you can do with the control of your own hand. So what you would do, draw an oval. That would be like somebody's face, an oval. I mean, no, there are different shaped faces, but we'll, we'll do an oval, right? And take your time, um, you know, don't rush it or whatever. We'll, we'll go along together. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's, uh, you know, it's something that you can use as a guide in your mind if you are going to do portraits. Okay. So now, Christine, will you draw a line down the middle of that uh, oval? Okay, that's showing the middle of the face, okay? And then what you do is that head, you divide into three parts, three equal parts, starting at the top, a line across there, in the middle, there. So now you have three components top, middle, and bottom, right? Now, on the top line, horizontal line, you draw an eyebrow there on that top line, on the line. Yeah, it was close to, and then, and then you can draw an eye underneath. This is just for, um, to show you approximate what you would do, right? They're not gonna look like this. Again, it's the computer, is no, no, um, uh, um, nothing like having your own hand do it because a computer, no matter what, can. I do it on paper, it looks similar. I'm a miserable painter. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And so then at the second horizontal line is where your nose would be. So your nose would come down, the, the hook of the nose is at the bottom line, like, yeah, like that, right? And depending if it's front on or if it's profile, because you, if you wanted to do profile, you would move your center line over to the right or to the left, and then it would go into profile. Then the, the first and second horizontal line on the side of the head is the placing of your ear. So you would draw one ear there, and on the other side, another ear, on the other side of the head, Christine, <laughs> where are you? I'm here. Then you see Did you freeze? You froze. Oh no. You froze. Yeah, are you yeah, there? You're back, you froze. Maxine? My internet is unstable, is it? Yeah, you froze. You're back. You'll be right back. So in the meantime, make a maybe a better rendering of that face. But I like the idea to put it in thirds because I never was able to. Oh, here we oh, are. There she's back. Oh my God! I'm sorry, people. <laughs> you froze. You froze, darling. Okay. 
All righty. And so then, all right. So the, the, then between the, the bottom line and the chin area, midway or so, is where the mouth would be. Right, just in there. Yeah. So now what, what I do when I usually, usually, what I do when I start off doing a portrait, I do, and I paint in oils, by the way. The reason I use oils is because I find them the most forgiving. If you make a, a mistake, you can go over it, you can blend it because it doesn't dry uh, right away. That's the downside of oil, so you have to wait for them to dry. But when working with it, uh, with oils, it's easier for me anyway. And uh, <laughs> love those teeth. <laughs> um, so, and then if you do, if you do this in charcoal, if you do your image, your sketch in charcoal, um, you can then smudge lines, you can do shadows, you can play with it a little bit. And then I do do that as well. And there's a, there's a fixative that uses spray. And when you have finished your sketch, you can spray it and it'll hold it in place. And then you can go over, uh, over that with any paint media medium that you want. So I often will do that. And then you can see beneath when you, with, with, with oils too, you can do a lot of blending and rubbing. And so if you have your charcoal behind it and it can give a shadow, uh, that works for me. I use my hands a lot, my fingers. I blend and I blend and I blend. I have paintings that I, I have done with barely using a brush. I don't know why again, it's just like, I think it's it's the vibrational thing, just a touching and I'm very tactile, I hug a lot. So <laughs> maybe that's it, it's like hugging my painting, I don't know. But um, so it's it's not, difficult. Um, now, will some people, according to others, paint better than others? Yeah, okay. But it's, don't let that stop you from doing this. And, um, uh, you know, and some people, their creativity rests in, in music as opposed to visual arts or, or, or applied arts or, um, you know, um, uh, technology. Sculptor. Christine is a wonderful sculptor and we should do a show about that sometime. She's done some wonderful sculptures. And, and so, you know, each of us is individually inclined to be creative in our own way based on who we are on the inside and our experiences of life. And um, so this, uh, we're not going to go into uh, much more detail than that, because what I am always afraid of, that I am telling somebody how to paint. And I don't think I have the right to do that, because I'm not you. And, uh, and this is why, you know, when I got upset with, uh, with my uh, art teacher, Maury, when he, di he didn't know, but when he did that, I was like, and even up to today, I'm thinking, oh my God, you know, it's not fully mine. Um, but that's, that's me. And everybody, again, I, I, again, is, like I said, an individual and in how they express themselves. But uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing to do. I don't know whether you intend on, on selling your work uh, or not. And that's not important as how you feel about your expression, you know. And don't let other people get you down, no matter what. Just do it. So... Maxine, I really love how you basically says it's not about the technique, it's about the expression of how you feel about the art that you are creating. Yes, yes, absolutely. So it's okay not to be able to do a great job by all humanly standards. Uh, you'll be, never be like a, a fun, fun go a Picasso. Well, that's and not true. <laughs> You're Maxine. You know, but, but the whole point being is you are, yeah, you are you. You can't compare yourself with another. You can copy a technique or, or an image. Or, uh, well, you could say that's what I do because I do, I do use photographs, but it's my interpretation. Can you show 
the 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 painting I did of Billy, please. Yes, of me. course. It's a friend of mine, and it's my latest my latest portrait. Let me see. This is a book for those who are interested in having a look. Let me just put the videos out of the way. Okay. We can do that at the end, Christine, if you don't yeah. mind. I'd like this to go to the now. Okay. <laughs> now, can you raise it a little bit, Christine? There, there we are. All right. So this was my friend that I did. Now, is it perfectly like the photo? No. But I had people tell me, the eyes, the eyes. I have a thing about eyes when I paint. It's not on purpose. The eyes follow you wherever you are. They follow you. I didn't plan it like that. But the eyes are the windows to the soul. And I figure it's my soul going into this soul and reflecting me back or reflecting him out of there. I don't know which, uh, which one it would be. But um, so he's a golfer. So I put golf clubs on his shirt. I'd never painted golf clubs before. I took a little picture of golf clubs and I'm like, <laughs> you know, to get them. But I was quite happy with, uh, with this portrait. And, uh, um, you know, so just enjoy yourself, have fun with it. Uh, there are lots of, of, of videos that will teach you technique on, online gazillion of them. I watched a lot of them too. And then I just went back to doing my own thing because I felt more comfortable. That was me and, and my interpretation, you know? So. so before we log off, I want to say two things. For one, I want to encourage you, if you have any questions, comments, want to say something, go ahead. Yes, uh, tell Maxine what you think. And secondly, if you don't tell me that you don't want to hear about it, I will send you the uh, invitation to the next webinar where actually Dr. Patricia Bulani, who is here, uh, she will talk about sleep and how it relates to mental health. So that will be awesome. Marvelous. And then, um, I, as I say, I do have a, a book I'm not trying to sell the book, please, it's not that. What I'm trying to tell you is this. The book came out of all of the things that, that happened to me in my life. And, um, uh, and so in a way it was cathartic. Uh, I, I have another book too. And then I have an, I have an auto, it's like an autobiography of my experiences in India. Oh my God, <laughs> I escaped with the help of police. It was incredible. But anyway, uh, my life has been a little wild. But so if you are interested in seeing the book, all the information is there. Christine has shared. Yeah, and uh, I'll send you a link to the recording. So if you want to hear it again, you can. And those who haven't had the chance to be here get the same or were late for any reason. And if you are at all have any questions, comments, let me know. Uh, I got a comment, beautiful poetry, you're so talented and I agree you are. And uh, yeah, people would like to have the invitation and the information and I will be happy to send it to everybody. Any other comments, suggestions, comments, anything you really would love uh, me to present for you or with even another guest because I have a lot of interesting things coming up. I have actually webinars planned the, about sleep, of course, with Dr. Pat, but also decluttering your space and brain, philosophy and mental health with a very interesting gentleman from Dubai. Uh, improv for mental health. <laughs> the end of victimization with a gentleman that also does thought coaching. He is an amazing person. Then I have a lady talking about the blood sugar blues. And I have a natural Mr. Olympia talking in November about fitness and fat loss. <laughs> he knows a thing of you about it and being a bodybuilder, but never used steroids. He's a lovely man. He's by the way, yeah. he's dark skinned, but he's an awesome person. 
no, not bad. And he's an awesome person. And he's my age. He'll be 60 this year. So awesome. Maxine is a little younger. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Otherwise, I thank you all very much, every single one for being here. And I'm looking forward to meeting you again. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye.